Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. <clears throat> I'm gonna go look at the sugar apples today because they look like they were some ripe ones on there, which I've never had happen in June before. So I'm gonna go look at them because from a distance they appeared ripe. So I'm gonna go along this street and look at them, and I'm gonna look at the achachiro, and I'm gonna look at the Kwaimak. Maybe a couple mangoes. So we have mangoes. I really haven't been pushing them because they're too good and they seem to disappear rather quickly. Look at this Kwaimak tree. So we have two fruiting trees and this tree has produced fruit for the last three years. And this is a grafted tree. It's been in the ground here for seven years. It was bought as a very tiny, like that big, eight inch graft from Excalibur, <clears throat> along with four others, and planted out here and <clears throat> left to survive. And this is the only one that survived. They were kind of sickly plants to begin with, but it like pulled itself together. This is a peach cobbler mango. This mango has been so good. <clears throat> Uh, triple sec, TS, <laughs> it's so good. <clears throat> so honey kiss mangoes, they've been extraordinary, uh, even the early ones. So we've got about 15 inches of rain in the last four days. Uh, uh, unusual amount of heavy rain. And this guy next door bought this property and I told him it flooded next door and how to fix it and look at that so we don't have any standing water here but all the properties around us are like this <clears throat> I, I don't, I've offered my help but it came came here yesterday wanting to know the number for waste management. And I'm like, I can't help this person. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> just like, okay. The retired surgeon, they told me, I'm a retired surgeon. I expect to get at what I want now. Okay. Vero Beach people, they're a little bizarre. Look at that squirrel, carrying that mango away. You go, a little girl or boy. Get it up in your nest. <laughs> oh, one less for me to worry about <clears throat> finding a home for. It's very lush and hot here. It's hot. I mean, it's really hot. Hotter than usual. This is a buttercream mango. It's, they've been very good, too. Um, still quite a bit of mangoes on it. I'm going to go in here and look at this achachichiro. So yeah, they're changing colors. I see the achachichiro changing colors. Yay, I see some in here changing colors. Let me go in where I can look in here better. Right here. This is usually where I peer into this tree. And look at the mushrooms down there in the ground. Those are those edible mushrooms. Um, there's the achacha iro. Here's the achacha iro. There they are. There's some over here. Yeah, they look very nice. Uh, looks like they'll all be ripening a lot of them at the same time. So they're not close. They need to be golden. <clears throat> it's that Juicy Pearl Star Apple. Very rare Star Apple.
So look at this tree aloe. Uh, I'm into cacti. They were one of my, you know, they were my fruit tree years ago, you know, but I, my tastes changed. But I still cherish the cacti. Um, you know, I have quite a few different types of cacti. And here's that other Kwaimak tree. flowering it's got fruit on it so this is a different type this is a seed grown tree this is my oldest tree I've had the longest here so I planted this tree as a little tiny eight inch tall stick basically six inch tall right in front of the door when this was all lawn because this was lawn for 55 years so it had big big huge puddles of standing water like the neighbor has over there um that was the same way this place was and <clears throat> that killed a lot of the trees here when i plant them not a lot but some of the one some of the trees some of my favorite trees that were planted where it's wet died with standing water The birds are even quiet today. These aeroids are looking really nice. Um, quite happy with these. The Speriorum, Philodendron Speriorum is growing up the tree finally. Same with this Philodendron Spinlended. Mm -hmm. Very nice, I don't have to water these things. This is Philodendron domesticum. This leaf has been out here in the sun and it's got a lot of white on it. And I'm surprised actually that it's like, looks as good as it does. It's really a tough plant. <clears throat> I collect all kinds of different plants, not just fruit trees. Um, here's a Garcinia intermedia. There's a lot, so much fruit on here. These Garcinias are just, and you know, this, you know, lemon drop mangosteens aren't really the best mang uh, of the New World mangosteens or the, you know, the, the non-mangosteen mangosteens, <laughs> but they sure do, you sure won't let them go to waste. You'll go pick them <clears throat> and eat them because they're good. It's a new leaf on Anthurium nigra laminum. Look at how beautiful that is. I believe this was the last new leaf. So I got some Criollo seeds. Um, cacao Criollo. Uh, we have Trinitoro Criollo and the yellow one. So they're doing good. I get my cacao seeds from Montoso Gardens. I also got that Garcinia Peru. Um, and one of the seeds germinated, so. They're very elderly seeds. I usually don't buy from Tradewind Fruit because last time I bought from, they didn't germinate, but this time, one germinated. So that's good. This is Philodendron patriciae that for some reason this pot keeps getting water in it, but these are like um, doing well. <clears throat> Anthurium regale, Anthurium regale. Uh, Where's Waraquianum is over here. Uh, she almost fell over, I see. She got tore up right here. Yep. This is Melanochrysum from Equigenera. This is Gigas from Equigenera, but it keeps wanting to go over that way for some reason. I'm going to have to... Come over here and fix that. This is uh, Obliqua Peru. This is mascara. It's been so windy and rainy here. I'm surprised that any of these things have have uh, 
survived, to be honest with you. Didn't get trashed. That's philodendron luxurians. The leaves are getting huge. They do well. I'm just going to leave them outside. I'm just going to do cuttings right where they're at and um, <clears throat> see how it goes. Here's that. Uh, let's see if I can step in here somehow. Garcinia mangostana, right there. <laughs> I gotta look at it now. There. Hiding next to Obliqua Peru. This is our, our fruit and cacao. We have, I don't know, 30 cacao trees, three different types. You know, naturally grown. We grow everything the same way. Dry farm. This is that African peach, the Noclea latifolia. It's getting kind of big. I guess it gets shrub-like. It's got a piece over there. It's got that piece. It grows in this ginger. A lot of stuff grows in this ginger that I have everywhere. It's a Lesser Virginia a ginger, a Gaul and Gaul ginger. <clears throat> it's a Chacha Eros. So our citrus. We grow lots of citrus by hand. It's really or by by hand. We grow lots of citrus by seed. Um, all of our citrus is grown from seed. <clears throat> Fire ant got me. Yep. Ow. I'm trying to make my way up to the sugar apples. A uh, chachi earl. These are seed uh, guavas. <clears throat> That's a giant uh, crunchy one. White giant crunchy. Mm. I had mulberries. There's a sweet uba jay. In fact, I should go look at that mulberry real quick because mulberries are mulberries. Mulberries are fruit like to eat. I've been eating about five mangoes a day. Our mangoes have been so through unexpected the roof good. <clears throat> They're eight dollars a pound. You need to text me if you would like some. 772-584-2175. There's our achacha arrow. Boy what a difference uh, a little rain makes huh? Yesterday there was like four mulberries on here and I see today there's like, oh, they're still there. There's more than that. But they're not ripe, I got all the ripe. Oh, there's a lot of mulberries on there. So this bloomed without even cutting it back or fruited without cutting it back. The world's best, gotta love it. <clears throat> There's a mango, Juliet. They're looking good. Nice and clean. Hey, we don't have to worry about all that <clears throat> disease they get with the, uh, you know, disease and pests and, you know, all the stuff you get when you <clears throat> don't grow as close to nature as possible. This is a Garcinia gardneriana, and she's been giving me lots of fruit. So the fruit on this is edible. Uh, little fruit right now. Good, eat the skin and all. This is Brazilianses. That wasn't quite right. All right, <clears throat> a little tart. All the lemon drops get very sweet if you allow them. <laughs> to remain on the tree. There's a Brazilianus. Eat the skin on that too. Mmm. Like that. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious.
I would like to sell those, but we really don't have enough trees and the trees hadn't started really producing. They hadn't gotten quite big enough to really produce enough fruit to sell. So <clears throat> I haven't been selling it. So here's Kizar mango. I finally picked one. Um, This is Gary Mango, this is Dot Mango. Sc scant producers, but they're kind of in a bad location. This is Super Julie. Uh, she's rather pretty and clean fruit, which I told wasn't was told it wasn't possible, especially with all this rain, um, for a Julie progeny to be um, Disease free. So here's a here's the orange sherbets. Lots of orange sherbets. So these are yeah. The mangoes that I sell are the ones in the back. They're the ones that haven't had any animal inputs. Yeah, no manures brought near them. This was a, a fairly big achachiero tree, and there's another big one just across from this. Uh, about the same size. Is it bigger? No, it's about the same size. And then there's a big guava tree right there. We have bananas, but <clears throat> you know, they're just, I have bananas right now. I seem to have bananas. I've had bananas every day for a month, I think, which is kind of nice. But we have 300, so I have uh, these sugar apples. So I want this to be Adamoyas planted along the driveway. So sugar apples every 10 feet all the way down and then all the way on 12th Street with ginger, gall and gall ginger intercropped in between them, dry farmed. And then in here was mangoes, or is. <clears throat> Most of the mangoes in this area all froze. So I put bananas in here. Originally I had four rows of Sure, it's three more rows of sugar apples. Then I put two rows of Adamoyas. The Adamoyas are still in there. There's sugar apples in here still. Here's Adamoyas that are finally doing good. Look at all the fruit on here. Yay. Adamoya is one of my favorite fruits. Definitely just as good as Guanabana in my opinion, but totally different. Um, there's a lot of fruit on that. And Look at these things. This is what I walked by here and saw all, or when I was mowing, I could see all this fruit on these trees. Uh, lots of fruit, uh, hundreds of fruit. We do not hand pollinate our uh, anonas. Everything has to be, everything gets taken care of by itself and Look at all this fruit on here. I mean, this is this is the best fruit year ever uh, on these. So the last year fruit that I left here is a little one that got mummified, but you know, I can't come out here and clean them all up. I have hundreds of these anona trees. So um, there's a little anole. Here's a Adamoya. Here's a Anona. She's looking not, I'm not a Anona. Here's a Ilama. She's looking very good. Uh, here's more of these sugar apples. And uh, they're just, really, they're just everywhere. Here's one that I saw maybe looked like it was changing color. They're nice looking. Look at those. Those are big sugar apples. It's not even. I don't know. Usually these don't ripen until August, but they're so big this year from all the rain, I guess. It's a custard apple. More sugar apples. Big eyes. That's what you want to see. Big eyes. Big eyes. Eyes of these, these things. <clears throat> 
Here's another uh, Atamoya. It's doing quite well. I would be surprised if this does not have any fruit on it. But, oh, there it is. I see fruit. This is a Geffner Atamoya. Here's a uh, sugar apple. Yeah. Lots of sugar apples. It's a sugar apple. Going to be a sugar apple year. Oh, yeah, there's... And finally, Atamoyas. I was probably the saddest when I sold my original food forest in Grant, Florida. I had two fruiting giant cacao trees and a bunch of other fruit, but probably the saddest I was was letting go of my um, Geffner Atamoya and I had a Lisa Atamoya. I do not have a Priestley. I like the Priestley Atamoya. Pigeon peas. Here's the sugar apples. Look at how nice they look. Oh, there's so many of them. They're not ready yet, of course. I thought maybe they were, but it was just a color change in one. But I see now. This is uh, the chewy purple sugar apple. I saw it had fruit on it. I was thought it was another tree, but it's this one. Um, there they are. Ah, chewy purple sugar apples. I'm sure it's going to produce more. It's got more flowers on the other side. I thought I saw two fruit on it, but there's one fruit on it for sure. Yeah, these gingers intercropped with these um, sugar apples. But I plant the ginger one rhizome with one small sugar apple. So one rhizome in between, you know, one rhizome, one, one little tiny piece of ginger with one little piece of green on it like that uh, in between, in the middle of the ginger. Or in the middle of the... <laughs> it's getting hot. In the middle of the uh, <clears throat> sugar apples. Here's an Atamoya. So I was wondering if this was the chewy purple sugar apple, but that's an Atamoya. Yep, there's sugar apples, people. Sugar apples are kind of low maintenance once you get them. I'm kind of surprised people have trouble with them. Compaction, they don't like compaction. They don't like standing water. So, look at these. These are Namdak Mai's. Uh, doesn't even feel like I've, uh, doesn't feel like I've even, uh, begun to, uh, Harvest mangoes. There's so many of them still. That's a, a super Juliet. No, this is Juliet. This is a Inga Cinnamonia. I'm going to get in the shade here. Anyway, that's the sugar apples and Achachiro and a rare aeroids and, you know, whatever else I mentioned along the way. Um, that's an update on our farm. We do have mangoes for sale. They're $8 a pound. Text me. Let me know how many you want. 772-584-2175. We only have limited supply, so they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone. So this is Eric, Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming, and I hope you have a beautiful day.